Seahawks fans, wherever you may be. Thanks for listening to the show. Join your hosts, Bill Alfstead and Keith Myers, as we talk Seahawks football. Hey, hi, Seahawks fans. Welcome back to another episode of the Seahawks Playbook Podcast. I'm your host, Bill Alfstead, sitting down with co-host Keith Myers, here to talk Seahawks football after a tough loss on Sunday against the visiting New York Giants. Um, everyone agrees that was the worst possible game as a uh, response to the Lions loss. Uh, it seemed like it was a perfectly set up game, Keith, to bounce back, um, get everything in order, have the defenders that were missing in the Lions game return. And uh, after having, you know, 500 yards of total offense against the Lions, you would think that we would be somewhat in sync and everything would flow well. And that's not at all what happened in this game. No, instead they gave up 420 yards to a very talent deficient New York giants team and just looked absolutely pathetic um, on all, in all phases of the game. This was, this was something the Seahawks should be embarrassed about. Honestly. I mean, I know that even the really bad NFL teams have a lot of talent and, and are good, but, the CX had no business letting the Giants hang around in this game, let alone be in control of it from the beginning to the end. Like that, yeah. this was this was a disaster. And quite honestly, they lucked out having it not be even worse. I mean, the Giants uh, af- after uh, Jones fell down over his feet and, and took a sack on the first play from scrimmage, he marched down ninety some odd yards. And to the to the half yard line, they fumble. We we get the ball there and and return it. Now, I think that was probably a, you know without a line of sight on that ball, that ball could have very well crossed that line of scrimmage. I'm not sure, but it hit a New York Giants player's helmet as he was laying on the ground right as that ball was crossing the line. And um, anyway, Jenkins did the right thing, returned it, scooped it up, returned it 102 yards. Good for him. But that defensive performance in that first drive never really left. That yeah. They continued to be able to move the ball at will. Um, their rookie running back making his first start had a tw- 128 yards on 18 carries. Mm-hmm. The Jones could pass at will. We didn't get any pressure. They ended up with three sacks. Two of them, though, were just stumbled kind of sacks or running out of bounds and, you know, uh, run and chase situation. Um, that we had three pressures, three pressures with our defense. Yeah, I couldn't even possibly imagine predicting that. Uh, especially um, with 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 Boye Mafe and and Ichinanuasu back, and you know Williams in the middle, supposedly supposed to help so that Jones couldn't step up, but he was able to do whatever he wanted. Um, and our defense just had no, um, no answer to i'm sorry daniel jones is not a good quarterback and he could do whatever he wanted against the seahawks and that's alarming absolutely alarming yeah so we couldn't stop the run we couldn't stop the pass couldn't get to the quarterback uh allowed them to run off 25 minutes of uh time of possession in the first half alone mm-hmm. um and then offensively we couldn't protect we allowed seven sacks and multiple hits, multiple pressures. Gina wasn't getting the ball out and processing quickly uh, like he did against the Lions. Um, we ran the ball seven times for 30 yards in the entire game. Yeah. So that's um, called, that's so called had, runs. They had, the CX did have um, four additional runs for 72 yards, which is actually um makes it sound really good but those are scrambles by gino those are not called runs those are pass plays that ended up with running yards um yeah seven running plays and 15 passes out of the first 17 plays well that was the first half essentially 17 plays yep and uh, 15 of them were passes um so if you look at that, that in that first half right 17 plays five of them came in the uh, two minute drill at the very end of the game, which was probably the CX most effective drive until the touchdown at the very end, um, where they, you know, moved at 30 yards and got in range for a field goal to keep it tied at halftime. Um, 
those are two minute drill plays. Those aren't scripted plays. Those aren't the ones that are part of the game plan. Those are right. Two minute warning. Um, it, it's a, it's a whole different setup. They ran 12 plays as was game planned by our offensive coordinator in the first half. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and those 12 plays did nothing. They had one first down. You know, and if you extrapolate <clears throat> over a hundred plays, we had an 88 to 12 pass to ratio in this game. Um, in the last, in the first games, now this is gets down to, you know, minutes, but we were 12 of uh, 46 third down conversions over the first three games and are uh, 10 of 22 over the last two. Um, <clears throat> it's, I don't know. I, it's frustrating. You were there, Keith. Um, why don't you I tell was. me what it was like to be in the building Good and bad, and um, how was how was your time there? And then let's let's talk about your perspective on the game. So, okay, um, those are very different different things. So, uh, <laughs> being there was great. Um, it was a very smooth drive up, um, parked close, great um, atmosphere. Like it's, I mean, it's Lumen Field. It's a great place to watch a football game, um, and you know the crowd was. It was this thing was packed. There were, um, there were some Giants fans down by the Giants bench, but it is this isn't like one of the. You're in Phoenix, so when you go to a um, when the Seahawks play Arizona, it's forty percent Seahawk fans there. Um, yeah. You know, when you at Lumen Field, like it was two percent Giants fans. I mean, there was very few. Um, there were, I mean, there were enough. But there, it's not. It's, this was a home, um, uh, a home field advantage game that should have mattered, and it didn't. Um, but honestly, the the Seahawks just had no energy. You could kind of see it in warm up. There was it was everything they were doing was they were kind of going through stuff slow, and and there just wasn't like there wasn't that energy. There wasn't that bounce in anybody's like um, you know steps as they were doing stuff. It's everything kind of felt like it was going in slow motion. Uh, and then they went out in the game and it felt like they were playing in slow motion and they slept walked through this game. Yeah, um, and I don't know if that's what it felt like um, watching it on TV, but that's what it felt like in the stadium was it felt like they, they just assumed that they were going to win this game. And even when they got behind, they're like, eh, it's the giants. Who cares? We'll get it. It'll be like um, Denver where, we'll, you know, yeah, things were a little rocky in the beginning, but who cares? We came back in and dominated. Um, and, but they never did. The Giants just kept pushing and kept on at them and the CX never woke up enough, uh, to, you know, to get this game under control. Uh, I was thinking about it on the trip home because it's a long, like five hour drive with all the traffic trying to get out of there. Um, and then, you know, all the way down, down here to, to Vancouver, um, it took, yeah, it took a while. Um, but on the way back, I was thinking about it. And I'm like, I think they were doing what you and I did. And that's, we put the Lions lost mm -hmm. behind us. We go, okay, the Giants game, this should be an easy win. And we've got San Francisco coming up on Thursday night. And that's going to be, you know, the game of the year for the Seahawks, at least the game of the, or the first half of the season. Like that's such an important game. And I honestly think they, they took this game for granted and they were just looking ahead at San Francisco and so you here's, can't here, do that. Here's what Leonard Williams had to say about that exact thing. <clears throat> mm -hmm. I think we expected to come out here and beat this team. And I think in a way we kind of underestimated them and we didn't throw the first punch when we took the first punch. It made us be like, Whoa, as a team, you can kind of see it on people's faces and stuff like that. We need to come out with a better mindset against the 49ers. Um, he already had the 49ers on his, on his mind there at uh, post game. So mm -hmm. uh, he also said today there was too many guys holding their heads down, a little bit of bickering and stuff like that happening on the sidelines. Um, I feel like we need to remember to stay close, stay family, have each other's back and remember that it's a fourth quarter game. A lot of times in the NFL, it comes down to the last two minutes, which happened today. I'm tired of seeing guys lose confidence throughout the game. We just need to keep our heads up high and remember it's going to all come down to the end. 
So yeah, you and uh, Leonard Williams kind of had the same sentiment. <laughs> yeah. If, if someone had remembered to block, um, and, um, on that final kick, this game was going to overtime. And did you Seattle see the had... replays or pictures of that at all? No. Okay. So what happened was that after the ball was snapped, the nose tackle over the center, pushed the center down, uh, forcefully with his hands on his, on his mid back and kept him down. And Lincoln Tomlinson was playing right guard. Uh, during the, the that up and dove straight down to the ground. For whatever reason, he decided not to engage in blocking. He just dove down. And that enabled this, like, one foot high, like, thing that the, that the, the runner had to, had to jump over to, uh, Simmons had to jump over to, and he did jump through the gap. Mm-hmm. Um, so technically legal. But that holding of that, the, the, our centers um, down on the ground like that, I think was was illegal. But anyway, it, it you're right. It it was just one of those play. It was it was crazy. It's like I texted you right before that. I was like, you know, we just even if we did win, we don't deserve to win. And oh, yeah. um and then that happened, and I, when we didn't communicate at all after that, it was like fuck. But no, nope. yeah, because I was. It, it, Get yeah. into the car and, and yeah. drive, yeah, trying right. to get out of there, traffic and right. everything. Else. But it was God. it was so apropos for that to happen in that situation. Uh, you know, when, um, for example, the play that led up to that was Jackson Smith and Jigba short handing that ball that came right to him. All he had mm-hmm. to do was extend just a little bit more. The defender wasn't wasn't going to make a play, and he could have had that first down. Continued that drive. I think we. Maybe we'll um, at least gotten closer, different scenario, or whatever. But, um, and and then the block kick, you know, it was just kind of crazy. But that was really kind of a, a, to me, a full circle payback for that fumble recovery and return for 102 yards. Yeah. It's like, it, we could have, it, this game could have been so much worse for Seattle as far as statistically on, and, and the final score on paper. It was... It was ugly, you know, from the very beginning. I I sat through it reluctantly. I was found myself reluctantly sitting through the game (laughs) because it was just so bad. I was just like, I can't believe this is the same team I watched for the first three weeks. Mm -hmm. Just no discipline, no tackle discipline, no tackling discipline, no team discipline as far as like. It was weird because there was, there were some plays, like there was a big run um, up the middle and and you watch and Tyrese Knight was in. Um, at middle linebacker. He did not play in this game, Keith. I have to correct you. He didn't? Oh, no, God, I he swear was it was him. He, he, he didn't play because he had some sort of uh, um, issue with, with, you know, a private issue at home or whatever. Oh, okay. I don't, then, but there was, I think you're thinking about Rashawn, Rashawn Jenkins in that play. Because maybe, um, he got I, sucked in and, and got washed out blocked out of that play and the gap was right where he was and yeah because there was um because i I mean because they were that that run came right right at me and so you can see like where everyone's lined up and you can see the hole develop and then you see one of our linebackers just run right not at the gap right and and it just ran right through and it's like everyone in the stadium knew where that run was going because it was blocked well and but we had a linebacker that was there that should have just stepped up into the hole and made the tackle. And instead they ran to a spot where that there was no hole. There, there was no one, there was no reason to go there. And it's literally like, it's like they, that was your read. That's where you went. And they literally just ran themselves out of the hole. So that way they could run up right through the middle. And I thought it was Tyrese Knight just um, based on number. And then I kind of looked at the replay and it kind of looked like that's who it was, but um, I don't know who it was then, but somebody made what was the most bonehead uh mm-hmm. play um yeah. that we've seen in in quite a while um yeah it's it was frustrating the every everything like we just got I mean, out was, manhandled at the line of scrimmage aaron, on both sides that, of the ball that was an aaron curry caliber <laughs> uh linebacker play on, mm-hmm. and i was just like dear god like what is going on yeah 
I mean, we can talk about individual performance and stuff. You haven't had a chance to watch the replay probably. And, and, and um, and so you can kind of, cause it's kind of hard when you're at the game to really pay attention to exactly who's making plays, and who's not. Um, Especially on the defense. Yeah, it was, it was, that was more of a challenge. I will say that um, they, on the first series, they went three straight plays to, um, to DK or maybe it was three out of four, um, one catch and a couple incompletions. And then they seemed to forget that DK Metcalf existed until the fourth quarter. I'm like, he is your, your, your best offensive player. So and you really, he existed for, th- I agree. For- but you, when you run 12, 12, 12 plays in the first half, and then you don't get the ball until midway through the third quarter. Sometimes that happens. Okay. But you yeah, still, I you, I you run, you only, you only ran 12 plays in the first half because you didn't get your playmakers the ball and you didn't run the ball, right? You, cause that they didn't get the ball to Walker. They didn't get the ball to, um, DK. Like, what are you expecting? Yeah. What are you expecting to happen? Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a good reminder early in the season for a young team, young coach, and and an offensive coordinator who thinks he's still in college to reevaluate what mm-hmm. what their team is, who they really are, where they've got their deficiencies and kind of figure that out. Like obviously they've got issues on the offensive line. Those issues are not going to go away. No, they need to figure not. out around the and, and Rob needs to understand that this is not a, the college game anymore and he has to have a certain amount of run plays and play action there's no play action with this team they he has to be able to do that in order to help his offensive line um give gino opportunity to because when when a defense can pin their ears back and just get after gino this is what happens seven sacks multiple pressures etc you've got to be able to have an element of of a run game in order to be able to keep the defense at least halfway honest. And so I expect that change. Now, if that change does not come, Ryan Grubb is not going to be long for the NFL because you've got to be able to do that you know, to be successful at this level. Yeah. And then the defense, I don't know, maybe Byron Murphy has an oversized importance on the defensive line that we're not understanding. Like maybe his presence there makes everything else work. And and in in a sense, that's the way his position is designed. But like he's the perfect player for that. But I I figured I'm not going to assign him too much success yet because he's a rookie. But maybe missing him is also making that defensive line have performance issues as well as far as playing as a unit trusting each other, making the right calls. And, and See, I think, I think that's, I, I, don't know if, I don't know if it's Murphy um, because getting, you know, when you've got Williams and Jones and Reed um, and Hankins, like you've got guys that can play. Um, but what it, it feels like is because the defense struggled so much against Detroit. Um, and then when they started to struggle in this game um, and just based on, you know, those Leonard Williams comments, it sounds like, Guys weren't, they were freelancing. They weren't doing their job. They weren't trusting each other and getting themselves in position um, and holding, you know, their own responsibilities. And once you stop, once you start freelancing, um, you know, as a team. We've seen that you, it's many, awful. many times. It, o- only yeah. bad things happen. Um, so how, how much of that do you attribute to Mike McDonald? Um. That's hard, um, but it does feel like. Um, I mean, this is this is he's used to being in control and having the the defense be you know in his um, realm, but he's now in charge of the whole team, and so he needs other guys to step in and do that. And whether it's those guys not stepping up or him not being willing to give them um, control to enforce that and make sure that those things are happening. Um, I don't know, but I, I would say that you've as a coaching staff, you've got to keep your team together. And uh, this is the kind of stuff that happens defensively 
when you don't have your team together. Um, and we saw a lot of it in the, um, uh, the end of the Pete Carroll era. Um, mm-hmm. And we didn't see any of this early on when I mean, the defense looked really good, but if, yeah, if they're starting to, to, you know, not trust each other, not handle their own responsibilities type of thing. Um, then this could spiral. This could spiral. It really could. And, um, I hope it doesn't, but yeah, he's got to go in and pretty much kick some ass right now. Like yeah. for me, the reason I kind of asked that, and I kind of want to go through this line of questioning with you is because I do think that there is a, an element here on both sides of the ball where this is likely a, an element here of, of coaching that takes, that should take most of the responsibility for this mm-hmm. back to back. Now these, these are good players, but they need to be coached. It's a young team. They, you know, there's some outstanding individual performers, but pulling them together as a team with a rookie offensive coordinator and a rookie defensive coach, who's also the head coach. Um, and everything's just kind of coming together. Now, if you really break down the first three games, they came against middling opponents and the, out of those middling opponents, those were some of the first games these players ever played, like Bo Nix, for example. Now, now we've played Jared Goff in a really competent Lions team. I thought we did very well offensively against that team, but the defense was not up to par. And then in this game, same. Even if when we had players back, and I'm and the way that they played, the way that they're losing, the way that they're not able to um execute to me is is it has its um just like we we assign blame to Pete Carroll and to uh Clint their Hurt. defensive Clint Hurt um we should be doing the same here and i think that they need to be held accountable and we need to hold them accountable and the players need to they need to figure it out because yep this thing could get out of whack really quickly. And for a rookie head coach, that's horrible. And I, I won't, I don't want to see that happen. I'm hopeful it won't, um, but it could. Yeah. I mean, you look at the schedule, right? 49ers, Atlanta, Buffalo, the next three games. Um, none of those are games that you can take for granted. You, you, you've got to bring your game and, um, what happens if this team falls to three and five? What are, what are we saying then? Right. Uh, all of the um, love that McDonald got in training camp and um, the, the first three weeks of the season, how's everyone feeling about it then? Now, I don't think that's going to happen, but um, it's, there's a non-zero probability. And so uh, I'm just looking at, at this and, and I'm like, we need to see how he reacts. Um, in the same way that we look at players and we go, okay, rookie players, they make rookie mistakes. You know what? Rookie coaches make rookie mistakes. Um, and they've got to learn from them. What did and you think about the going forward on fourth down on the 35? I felt like they had own. to. I think yeah. like the, I didn't it like was the a play. De- it felt like it was a desperate situation. It, 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 it I didn't like the play call. Um, they didn't because, even get a chance to run the call. No, yeah, because you know they why are you, it's you know half a yard to go. Why are you you know doing? They just hand the ball off. Just give Walker, um, you know, ahead block of it well and execute it, and you'll be fine. Yeah, they didn't um, trust that. And Which, that, I mean, that's just crazy to me that call because they didn't block it well. Gino didn't call out the line call. Somebody missed it. Oh yeah, just Brian Burns came completely unimpeded and was in Gino's lap and you know half a second yeah but and, there's a there's a few there were a few plays like that where um you know if they're bringing more um you know pass rushers then you've got blockers either change your the line call ahead of time um and fix that or get the ball out of your hands before they get to you um and Gino's got to right. do one of those two things and he did neither this was not a this was not a good Gino Smith game but also 
I'm going to go back to the the Ryan Grubb situation. Yes, that's in that, the other in, problem. <laughs> in, in order to to give Gino a a real chance in that situation, you've got to you've got to have more balance on your mm-hmm. on your play call. Yeah, uh, I, and that really was And I get that the the idea was to come in, get Gino going. They felt like they could um, lean on the success they had a week ago uh, with the passing game, get him going early, and then. Um, get the running game going uh, as kind of the counter punch and get your runs in. And when the first part doesn't work, you never get to your counter punch. And I get, that's kind of what McDonald was saying. Um, Mm -hmm. But you've got to pivot at some point. You can't go through the whole game and not give Ken Walker the ball. He's too dynamic. He's too good. Absolutely. And and if you look at the, if you look at the, um, the line, especially the two guards that aren't, particularly good um they're better at run blocking than pass blocking even though they're not necessarily great at either um they're better at run blocking than pass blocking and so um play to their strengths even if it's not that strong gotta give them a chance to run block because they're better at it and um yeah i don't know i this was a you and, could go and knowing that your defense is not game. playing well as well, you're giving your defense at least a chance to rest a little bit. Mm-hmm. Run some time. Yeah. I mean, if uh, I was Mike was... McDonald, I know that he probably p- pledges autonomy to his, to his other coaches, but if I'm Mike McDonald, man, I'm having a private conversation with Ryan Grubb at halftime mm-hmm. or before the game. I was just saying, dude, commit well, to the run now, or you're not here. Yeah, I mean, you look at um, what they did the first game of the season in Denver. They came out and they tried to throw it and they couldn't um, block and Gino was getting clobbered and they gave up two safeties and um, they came out in the second half and started running the ball and took over the game. And it felt at the time, just from the way things were said, that McDonald had something to do with that, that he was like, no, we've got to get to our identity, run the ball, be physical. Um, Mm -hmm. And Grubb fell in line and and did that. Like, and this was a game where they needed, he needed to do that again. It's like, we've got, we need to get our running game going. We need to be able to um, dictate terms at the line of scrimmage. And you do that, you know, uh, running the ball. Yeah. This team has no offensive identity because, you know, you can be a pass heavy team at all you want, but if you're not winning games, it doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. And this is kind of where we're at. So there is no identity, mm-hmm. and um, and they I mean, they've they, told they've told us they've told themselves, hey, we're we're going to be a physical team. We're going to win at the line of scrimmage. We're going to run the ball. And they don't do any of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. Uh, like I said, this is a um. Rookie players make rookie mistakes, have bad games. Rookie coaches make rookie mistakes and have bad games. This was a bad game. This was this was a bad game for Ryan Grubb. That doesn't make him a bad coach. Doesn't make him a bad coordinator. But this was a bad game. I think we can all agree on that. And um, okay, fix it. Yeah. And while and while he's fixing that defense, let's fix our um, not working together thing. You've got to play team defense or you don't play defense. And what we saw is them not playing defense because if you're not, the play is the way they're drawn up, need everybody to do their job. And if people are so running. So is that the way to cure the tackling problem issue now as well? Um, I don't know about that. Like, um, what but did I, you see when you were looking at the defense and, and from a high level, you know, top down kind of a look? So what I saw a lot of is, just really slow reaction. Um, I was thinking, you know, right in front of me, there was... Um, Is that from the play action that they were running a lot of? It, they were successful at running the ball, and then they ran play action over yeah, and over Yeah, but that shouldn't, affect, that shouldn't affect the corners. That shouldn't affect the safeties. They I mean, were that's, fighting, though. I mean, if you watched it, at least from the film I watched, no, you had some and they bites were, but it going shouldn't. on. And, yeah. it, shouldn't, it, it shouldn't affect them, because their responsibilities are coverage first. Um, and then, then go help stop the run. Um, whereas the linebackers, you know, they have more 
stop the run first, then get back into coverage. If you know, in, in terms of play action, like there's, um, it should not affect the corners and the safeties. And there was just a lot of really slow reactions. Guys would wait until the player was in front of them, like, oh, I'm supposed to cover them, and then you know, peel off and and and, and run with the player rather than knowing what was going on in front of them and staying with the player. And so like there was a touchdown that happened like right in front of me where um, it was like a little half rollout to um, the defense is left. So the offense is right. And then throw back across the field to a wide open guy. I mean, it had two, two players chasing, but there was no one else on, on, um, on the back side to help. And so he, once he got the ball, he just turned and ran in. Um, and I, you go through and you look at that and the guys that are chasing, why were you chasing? Why were you that far behind? Oh, because you were standing there until you were, Oh wait, I should cover him. And then by then you're out of position and you're not catching up. Um, there was a lot of that in this game. There's a lot of just flat feet and, um, yeah, it was, it wasn't pretty. Um, there were also just a lot of missed tackles that were frustrating. I mean, what's uh, the Jake, earliest point in the game where you you thought about leaving? <laughs> um, the earliest point in the game where I thought about leaving was when I actually left, and that was after the um, blocked kick touchdown. You're a good, you're a good fan. Um, <laughs> Yeah, but it was you know even at at halftime we're we're essentially tied right I think it's ten ten yeah yeah and um we played like crap and they out like I think it was two hundred and fifty yards of offense for them ninety for us no it was the only 40, reason we were in the it was game was forty five for Seattle wow the only reason we were in the game is because of that return yep. you know fumble and but then um, it came to, at the very end you know if um if Tomlinson doesn't fall on his face Mm -hmm. and not block anyone, if he does his job and, and block the guy coming through the, you know, through the gap created by, Mm -hmm. uh, stole the, um, long snapper getting held down. Um, yeah. All he has to do is chip right there. Just, yeah. If he, if he blocks blocks there, if he does, if he does his job at all, then we go to overtime and have a shot to win this game. Yeah. And they played like complete ass the entire game. So, and it, you were there in that moment, you're thinking, okay, they're going to make this kick. They had a little bit of a momentum situation going at that yeah, point. Yeah, because they just scored um 98 yard yeah, scoring drive. Long drive, looked really nice, got into the end zone, scored, um did so with all three of their timeouts and the 2 minute warning. So they were able to kick deep. They got the three and out they needed. And because of the um, incomplete uh, pass, right? Pass, for a minute warning. Yeah. Um, they still had two timeouts when they got the ball back. And then yes. Yes. Gino has the big run that gets him into field goal range. And at that point, you're thinking, okay, they might win this. They don't deserve to win this, but they might win this um, because they're already in field goal range. There's a couple minutes left. They still have their timeouts. And what happened? They got up to the line of scrimmage, couldn't figure out how to call a play and had to burn a timeout, even though the clock was stopped because Gino had gotten out of bounds. And at that point, I like, threw my hands up. And I'm like, what the hell are they doing? Like, what the hell? Like, how, how, do you, how do you end up in that spot? And then you are so slow at getting a play in from Ryan Grubb to Gino and getting up to the line of scrimmage that you have to burn a timeout there. Like that is completely asinine that that would happen. Mm. And at that point I was like, oh, this is just crap. Um, and then they complete one pass, have a couple incompletions. Okay, we're going to line up for the kick. They shouldn't be lining up for a kick there. There's still over a minute left. Why are you giving um, the Giants the ball back with a minute left? But they had no other choice because they couldn't get a first down. Um, and it was like they got to that spot after that Gino run. And it's like, they're like, okay, we made it. We're good. Right. And I'm like, come on. They, they needed to get to the line of scrimmage, call another play, take some shots at the end zone, go win this game now. 
uh, and not, but they didn't. They got down there and they got like, all right, foot off the gas, we made it. And then they didn't block on the field goal kick. And it was like, uh, it was, it, the frustration level was extreme. It really was. But up until that timeout that they had to take, it felt like this game had switched and that Seattle was going to, going to be able to win it because they got the touchdown. They got the three and out. They did, you know, they, 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 they held on to timeouts. Um, then they had the big play with, um, where he got out of bounds. So they still had their timeouts. Um, and you're like, all right, this is, this is going to happen. This is going to happen. And it didn't. And it was like, uh, it was so frustrating. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, it was. It was very frustrating. Very frustrating to watch. I'm sure for you as you're walking out and your mind's racing and you got a lot of time to think about it on the way home. It's just, it's, 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 it is frustrating. And the reason it's frustrating is because the team has the ability to be so much more. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's, it's frustrating watching a team kind of collapse a little bit. Now, next game up. Seattle hosts the 49ers on mm-hmm. Thursday night, October 10th, Lumen Field. Third game in 11 days for Seattle. San Francisco loses a close game at home to the Cardinals. The Cardinals are bad. Well, um, I mean, that, yeah, okay. The, Card- the but, Cardinals' pass defense is so bad. Well, we'll see um, what happens when we face them. <laughs> I know. Uh, are um, we bad, Keith? Are we bad? I don't know. They're still three. This is a team that's still three and two. Statistically, they're still fine. Um, they had a game against a really, really good Detroit team where the defense couldn't do much, but the offense looked good. Um, and then they had a stinker. Yeah. Um, we don't know what this team is. We don't. It's crazy how you kind of put a pause on this feeling of momentum and, and how good you feel about mm-hmm. the team after two tough losses to, and one uncharacteristic loss. Now I'll take the Lions loss. I had that penciled in as a loss and yep. the offense looked great. Defense. Eh, we were missing four guys this time. We, we get the guys back. Guys. Right. Um, we, you know, you know what I mean? It's, it's yeah, like, we got five out of six back and then, uh, looked worse. Yeah. Looked worse against a worse team. Yeah. But I, I do think that, and you know, Leonard Williams, um, agreed they took this game for granted and we're looking ahead at San Francisco. They weren't prepared for this game at all. And, um, that is something that as a coaching staff, they're going to have to learn from and they need to find ways to, in situations like this, to get guys focused on this game, playing well for this game and not looking ahead until after the game's over. Um, and I, like I said, they're new. They're all, they're all rookies. Um, it's and, actually a really decent situation to bounce back. It, you don't have enough time to really think about it. Now, if, if I know Mike McDonald, he's game planned this game pre ahead of time. And um, that might so be part of the gotta, problem. Is that they, they game plan planned ahead. this game pre ahead of time instead of focusing on the giants. Um, I saw, I read a yeah, thing. Um, from it was not it was I listened to the radio on the way way home and it was um um uh, tight end Brady Russell and he was they asked like you know do they throw a bunch of stuff at you that you guys hadn't seen because they kept using him he got playing time and they used him as a blocker in the backfield um like as a fullback um in order to help protect Gino and he said no nothing that they did is is anything that we haven't seen it's like what they what we weren't ready for was how much pressure and how much man coverage, um, because that was, um, not something that they, they'd done quite as much of. They were expecting it to be mostly zone and it wasn't. Um, and that is interesting to me because it's like, okay, so what they saw in film Nothing that they did was something that you hadn't seen before. Um, but it was not the expectation as far as how they, how the giants called that, uh, the game defensively. 
Um, and that that's a game planning issue. That's yeah. a of scouting, evaluating what the defense is going to do against you and prepping for it. Um, that's, that's on, that's a game planning. That's a coaching um, tree side of, uh, of things. And I found that comment to be interesting. Um, and it might just be that, you know, the giants saw what other teams have done to Seattle and decided, Hey, we're going to go against our own, mm-hmm. um, you know, what we normally do. But if, other teams are doing it. If giants saw that other teams are having success doing that against Seattle, you have to expect the giants are going to be doing some more of that than normal against Seattle. Well, every when, team, every team's going to be doing that more against Seattle until Seattle figures out they can, or how to stop it. Yeah. And how to stop it is run the ball. Yeah. Ryan, you know, grub is going <laughs> to, you're going to have those, those light boxes, but also sending blitz. So you're going to be blitzed more than you typically are. And, um, and until he mm-hmm. makes the, the, the defense adjust, yeah, and there's, he doesn't make the defenses adjust. It's you test, not going to happen. Texted me on one, at one point in the second half, it was like six straight, um, light boxes and, yeah. uh, five out of six plays were passes. So they're, they've got their pass defense in and you're not running the ball. Like punish and them you've got one taking, of the best r- r- running backs in the league. Most yeah, dynamic punish them for taking their run stuffers out, which is what um, the, the giants did to Seattle when Seattle would, would switch into their nickel and they, they'd have like essentially just two down linemen um, there. They ran it right at Seattle every time. Yeah. Yeah. You gotta be strategic, man. You got to yep. And grub okay. was not. Well, I'm looking forward to this next game. We'll come back. Hopefully, we've got a time to come back and, and preview this thing a little bit. Um, and I, I'm looking forward to this game more than any other game this year just because I need to get the other one out of my system, flush it, <laughs> yeah. and come into this game and, and see if we can right the ship. Uh, I'm pretty confident that we can, but they got to do it. Mm-hmm. Like, this really kind of shows me like what kind of coach Mike McDonald is, Grub, if he's making the adjustments. And, and the team, like mentally, is this team mentally strong or are they weak? And is this what we're going to see for the rest of the year? Um, so I'm, I'm very curious. Yeah, they can, um, they can, if they can come out and beat San Francisco here, make a statement, they've lost five straight games to San Francisco um, in the head-to-head matchup. After being 17-3 and three in the 20 games before that, um, they've lost five straight. If they can come out, make a statement, win this game, you, you it washes all the stink of the Giants game off them. Yeah, and they can I they agree. can push forward. So and have a little bit of an extra extra a week and a half to to get ready for the next one after that. Yep. So, but this is, this is an important game coming up. Very important. Very important. All right, let's get out of here. Find Keith on Twitter at Mars NFL. You can find me at NW Seahawk. The show is Seahawks Playbook Podcast on your favorite podcast platforms on YouTube. Hit that subscribe button. Leave us a comment, all that good stuff. So until next time, go Hawks. Go Hawks. Seahawks Playbook Podcast listeners, thanks for joining us for another edition of the show. You can find us on Twitter. Bill is at NW Seahawk. Keith is at Myers NFL. And the show is at Hawks Playbook. You can listen and subscribe to the show at SeahawksPlaybook.com.